What you guys, how you doing? It's Lee here from the Free Hammers. I hope you're doing well. Today I am here uh, to make a bit of a sister video actually. You may recall, or hopefully you've seen uh, Luke's video that he put out about a week ago now, um, where he uh, counted down from five to one uh, the saddest moments of uh, of our West Ham lives. Um, so I've now got the the honour, I guess, of uh, of doing the uh, the opposite to that, which is the happiest slash proudest moments of uh, of our West Ham lives. Now, a couple of caveats right at the beginning. Uh, number one is. Although the title of this video suggests that it's only particular moments, let me just say that I am immensely proud to be a West Ham fan 24-7. Um, you know, regardless of the result the weekend before, you know, I'll still be there the following week. I'm still going to match, he's still proudly saying out loud that I support West Ham. So let's not read too much into that. This is just picking out the moments that made me immensely proud, sort of uber pride, if you like. Um, number two, which is actually an important thing to say. Uh, the three of us here at the Free Hammers, we're all in our early 30s, we were born in 1985. Um, as of course you'll all know, that's five years after uh, West Ham won anything, or won anything of significance anyway. Not counting the Intertoto Cup, that being said, that hasn't made my countdown, but that was a good day when we beat Mets out there. Um, anyway, I digress. And so yeah, that's a really important point to make, is that we were born uh, in 1985. Um, so there's no point me... Uh, trying to give an opinion or speak about moments, i.e. the cup final when Brooklyn scored that header. I've watched all the videos of it, which of course is fantastic and it's an iconic goal in West Ham's history. And winning the FA Cup three times, having, you know, the last British side to all British side field and then the cup final, etc, etc. They're all fantastic moments, but I wasn't there. I wasn't even born. Um, so that's a very, very important moment. So if you're watching this thinking hang about, he's listing these things, not even that impressive. It's because, sadly, uh, in uh, for my generation, People in their early 30s, West Ham haven't had any success on the pitch. And it's a massive shame and it, and it breaks my heart to say that I haven't seen us uh, win a significant trophy in my lifetime. But fingers crossed it will happen soon. But anywho, so I, I'm doing this based on uh, on my lifetime, which, as I say, born in 1985 up to present day. So a lot of these are quite recent memories, really. Um, uh, reasons for that, number one, is it's clearer in the memory. Number two, um, I think we've gradually got a bit better with the odd blip. Uh, in between the odd relegation etc but actually gradually we've got better and we've had uh, more iconic moments I think in the last few years so um, I think that's enough for an introduction so let's go straight in with number five <laughs> number five um, talking generally about the great escape of the 2006-2007 uh, season uh, and my word it was a great escape um, and how proud did it make us all I mean seriously we were dead and buried Christmas come around, we'd had a terrible season, frankly, not many highs. And, and yeah, just nothing was going for us that year. If you think back uh, to the previous season, of course, we lost the cup final. Uh, it was heartbreaking and perhaps that had more of an impact uh, on us uh, as a squad at the time. And of course, it led uh, to being in the cup final. I think everyone was quite positive going into that season, thinking that we could have a decent year. I think we'd finished, uh, I'm doing this top of my head, I think we'd finished ninth or 10th uh, in that season. So everyone was quite positive. I mean, we went in with a good young manager in Alan Pardew, who I still rate so highly. Um, of course, come up against him this weekend get in, uh, for Palace. Um, and the season started, and it, you know, on the first game of the season, we beat Cholton 3, uh, I think it was 3 1, 3 0, 3 1, I think. Um, Colton Cole, the legend that is, scoring on his debut. Um, and everything was all right. We, and there was a couple of defeats after that. I remember mean, losing at home to Bolton. Um, I think losing at Anfield as well. Though that's no, that's no shock, is it? Really. Um, so yeah. So that's uh, that's where we ended up, basically, <laughs> um, not having a great season. And it uh, it came to transfer deadline day, the end of August. And uh, my word, we signed uh, Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano. No one saw it coming. No one uh, could have foreseen the. The enjoyment that at least one of those would bring us, coupled with the the financial difficulties that it would bring in later years. Um, but as it were, we signed those two, and frankly, they didn't really have the desired effect. Um, we all remember Nigel Quasi. Uh, everyone was saying about him, and Hayden Mullins, a player I loved, by the way, was keeping out Mascherano, who just, when he did play, didn't really set the world alight. 
um, it was solid, but not the player we thought we were getting. And then there was Carlos Tevez. Everyone was saying he was overweight, couldn't score a goal for love nor money until after Christmas. Then we had a six or seven week run where him, and it's not just him alone, Robert Green had a fantastic year, uh, back end of that year. Remember the Arsenal victory where he was just a brick wall. He was fantastic. Anyway, so all that happened and it ends up that we need to go to Old Trafford on the last game of the season and get something. Um, she probably would have needed a win. Draw may have been enough. Hindsight draw was enough. But uh, we went up there. No one gave us a chance in hell. Um, it was uh, it was really difficult. That, but the uh, the one blessing was that Man United had the FA Cup final the following weekend. So they rested a few players. Still a strong side. Any Man United side was always going to be strong. And it was. And the inevitable happened. And they were they were hitting us, hitting us, hitting us. Hit the crossbar. One, I think, uh, Benny Yoon cleared one off the line for us. Um, and then um, then uh, up stepped the man Carlos Tevez. And this is the moment uh, that I want to talk about for a second. Um, ball over the top, little ball through. Probably Van der Sar didn't want to get injured. I think it's probably fair to say with the cup final coming out. I mean, if it was a, a more competitive match, it was certainly competitive for us, but it wasn't for them. Um, you know, I think he would have come and taken taken the ball and taken Tevers and taken everything. Uh, but he didn't. Ball little through and then uh, a lovely little finish. Pandemonium in the stands. Pandemonium is on the pitch, on the dugouts. And then, of course, we had 45-odd minutes of onslaught, basically. Uh, United going first, going first. So, actually, the good thing was that they didn't really need to win the game. They'd already won the league. As I say, they had the cup final. It was a blessing in disguise that it ended up being... Uh, United, which is usually our toughest away game in a season, but it actually turned out to be a good thing. Um, so yeah, so all that happened, and then uh, and then wow, yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We ended up winning the game, staying up. No one given us, uh, no one, you know, no one gave us a chance in hell staying up uh, after Christmas. And how proud, how proud it made us, how it made us West Ham fans, it made me uh, to think that we'd come back from the dead. Basically, we were dead and buried. We were down. And we managed to come back and turn around what had been a terrible season to have that iconic moment of Carlos Tevez slotting the ball in. I remember Martin Tyler was the commentator. He said to San Clon Lance, he's done it again, the little fellow. And, and he had, because the last few games of the season, he had found some form, which we knew he had in there. And he knew and he'd proven since then at other clubs. And uh, yeah, just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And we managed to stay up, stay up for a few years after that. Kirby of course, left not long after. He had a full season and then a half, a sort of about four games, and I think it was the Anton Ferdinand thing. But I'll also be grateful for for Kerbishley for keeping us up that season, and for in the end giving Tevers the uh, the the space to play and and indeed bring us that iconic moment of that win at Old Trafford. We're going to return to Old Trafford later on in this video, actually, and I think you probably um, can think of uh, what it is. <laughs> My next one uh, is sort of grouped together and um, it's last season because I've known West Ham to have good seasons. Uh, but last season, we we sort of excelled ourselves, really. Yes, the Premier League was weaker. Yes, we had one of the most outstanding uh, players in the in the league uh, in uh, Dimitri Payet, who really uh, was fantastic. But everyone really stepped up. And there's a couple of moments from last season which made me immensely proud. Uh, the first one is, um, or well, first and, and last essentially, was that was that last game um, when that full time whistle went. Oh my word! I just, I was just a wreck because the game had everything. It was a roller coaster of emotions, and and wow, it, it's hard to explain just how proud I felt that we'd gone on and won that game. From being, there's no way a better win in a game when you're two one down with about twenty minutes to go, and and to come back and win it, and to say goodbye to 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 Upton Park like that was just was just fantastic, and you know it made me immensely proud. But um, the one I'm putting in at number four is something that happened right at the beginning of that season, and that was the three 0 win at Anfield, um, because no one saw it. again. A, a lot of these what I'm putting in here is that no one really saw them coming. And this was the first time in 50-odd years that we'd gone to Anfield and win. It's become a running joke amongst West Ham fans. When are we going to win Anfield? When are we going to win Anfield? And we did it. And we did it in style as well. A couple of red cards, which helped us, obviously. But actually, we, we wow, we did it in style. And being in that away end up there last season, you know, it was, uh, it was one, of my, one of the greatest moments of me supporting West Ham. 
and it's only in at number four, so we'll see what's coming up in a bit. So how did the game go? As we thought, really, it was amazingly comfortable. Liverpool weren't playing that great, but they had a decent start to the season. They were unbeaten at home, and we just took them apart. Master stroke by Bilic. He brought in Lanzini for his debut. Um, bearing in mind that the last couple of games, we'd lost two in a row at home to uh, Bournemouth and Leicester. The other way around, Leicester and Bournemouth. Um, and, yeah, we, we pulled it out of the park. And, wow, how proud, how amazing, how happy were the West Ham fans. I think it was just disbelief more than anything, really. Um, and that's a word that will come up a few times in this video. It's just the, the sheer shock of of getting that victory up there. So we won the game 3-0. And, in, in fact, it was it was quite comfortable in the end because Coutinho got sent off just after half-time. Payet just stole the show. show. He was fantastic. Um, Mark Noble got sent off towards the end uh, harshly. I think it got rescinded, actually. Um, but it didn't matter because we'd gone up to Anfield and we won. And wow, wow, it was just, it was just brilliant because I just remember like people like my dad, who's who's obviously been on this earth a lot longer than me, being incredibly jealous that I was there, and that I was there that, and I can say that I was there when we finally, finally won at Anfield and we did it, and uh, and it was just uh, the catalyst for what turned out to be a fantastic season for us, both on the road but also uh, at home where we only lost a few times and. It's twinned with a bit of sadness in that we, we, you know, that Champions League place was so close. It was so close last season. And going to Anfield and to places like that and going to Everton and, and having that fantastic turnaround that we did and, and beating the teams we did at home and playing as well as we did at home that season, it was uh, it made me immensely proud. Twinned with a slight bit of sadness that it, it didn't lead to something more than a seventh place fin finish, which it probably should have done. But uh, number four in my countdown is that 3-0 win at Anfield, which was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Moving straight on um, is the playoff final, actually from a few years ago uh, under Sam Allardyce. And it's uh, one of two uh, moments that uh, feature Sam Allardyce, uh, amazingly, considering um, his uh, the reputation he had at West Ham. But he's he bought two of my top five moments anyway. Um, the playoff final, still thinking about it now. What a day. What an unbelievable day. It was. Um, I wasn't confident waking up that morning. You know, going down the calf, getting a bit of breakfast. Wasn't confident at all. Didn't think we'd get the win. Um, uh, uh, Blackpool, where opponents had been there a couple of seasons earlier and they'd won it. They'd beaten Cardiff 3-2. So they had that experience of uh, playing at Wembley, whereas we didn't. And our record in player in the player finals previous to that, you know, we, we lost to, to Palace. Then we managed to beat Preston. Went up to Premiership, came back down again. And here we were back at Wembley. The only uh, slight bit of confidence I had is that how how easily we, we beat Cardiff in the semi-finals. 2-0 at their place, 3-0 at our place. It was a comfortable, comfortable uh, two-legged affair. But Blackpool were a decent side. And in fact, um, we probably should have lost the game, looking back. And at the time, I think we know we should have lost the game. Um, first half, we obviously took the lead uh, through through Colton Cole. Which twice he's come up. Um, great goal, actually. I don't think the goal gets enough credit. Um, and then they obviously pegged us back, Tom Ince, uh, of all people, getting the equaliser. And then they were the better side, by far the better side, and they should have won. They had about three really clear-cut chances, and it could have easily have been 3-4-1. By the time Kevin Nolan chased a bit of a loose ball, ball came in, um, felt lovely for Vazte, who nearly skied it. And uh, and Ricardo Vazte, um, you know, forever going down in West Ham folklore hit, really. Um for getting that goal and uh, and sending us back up to the Premier League. Again, twins with a bit of sadness. I keep saying this because it is. Because we should have gone up automatically. We had the squad. The wage bill was probably the highest in the league, I think. And really, with the players we had, we should have been going up automatically. We didn't. And looking back again in hindsight, um, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Because winning at Wembley, wow. You know, seeing your captain, it was Kevin Nolan, going up on them steps... Lifting the trophy, the day was just fantastic and coming out after the game and everyone sort of being around the Bobby Moore statue and the scarf going around him and it was just pure jubilation and, and pure happiness. Again, twins with a bit of relief that we were back in the Premier League. Actually, I really enjoyed that season, thinking back. Going to some grounds that, going to places like Barnsley, which I hadn't had a chance to go to before and, and places like that. And it was good to be able to go to those grounds and, and, and see them. So I did enjoy the, the, the year, but nothing beats being in the Premier League and thanks to Vazte and that fantastic day at Wembley which made us all so pleased and so happy to uh, to be in the, to be back in the Premier League and, and yeah, it was just fantastic and a day that will live uh, clearly in my memory. Oh, Tottenham 
top two now. Uh, in second place, um, twenty thirteen is probably the only uh, is probably the only match which I recall West Ham ever releasing a DVD for. And there's Winston Reid on the front celebrating. There's Big Sam on the back. It's him again. Um, we went to White Hart Lane. Shocking form. Bottom of the league. And by God, we managed to get a 3-0 victory. 3-0 victory at White Hart Lane. A bit of context again, because we were rubbish. At the start of that season, in fact, it was a rubbish season. It wasn't a good season in the slightest. We hadn't played well that year. And I think this um, and the other trip to White Hart Lane that season, where we won 2-1 in the League Cup. Um, again, you know... This was the highlight of the season. I think I'm thinking back now, I can't think of much else. Um, we got obviously got absolutely spanked um, nine 0 on aggregate in the uh, in the semi final. So less said about that, the better. Um, but in the league, we went to White Hart Lane on uh, what was it Sunday, the sixth of October, and we won and we released the DVD. There we go, three 0 victory. First half wasn't great. We did play a striker in that match. Vaste played sort of forward as is Diarmi and um, Kevin Nolan. All sort of taking it in turns to go to go forward, um, and it worked a treat. Everyone was uh, praising Sam Allardyce's um, tactics for the game because he got it spot on. And again, there was a moment I think it was Jermaine Defoe had a chance, and if he puts it away and gives them the lead, it's a completely different game. But he didn't. Uh, UC Eskalina made a cracking save uh, against him, um, and brilliantly we took the lead. Thinking back again to the goals, uh, obviously it was Reed, Vazte, and uh, Raul Morrison who got the goals. The first one, Kevin Nolan manages to block his own player's effort and then, thankfully, smashing finish uh, from Reed. I mean, being in the away end, oh my word, I've never known celebration like it. It was mental. I, I really thought, as each goal went in, sort of the closer I got to a heart attack, I think, because it was just, it was hot. It was um, the emotions, people were diving all over each other. It was unbelievable because we'd been so bad uh, that season again. We were bottom of the league and we'd gone to our biggest rivals and we'd, we'd played them off the park in the second half. And of course, Reid got the goal and then Vazte got a bit of a lucky goal. It was at that point where, you know, I was still feeling nervous. But again, you know, the celebration, just fantastic. Absolutely brilliant to be a part of. Um, it's great now looking back and seeing the contrast. There's some pictures between the home fans and the away fans, which are quite close to White Hart Lane and seeing that contrast, seeing pure agony and pure jubilation. And when the third goal went in, oh, my word just thinking back it, it's sort of bizarre really it, it just sort of like the world had stood still and it was only when that third goal went in that I actually felt comfortable that we'd won the game you know knowing West Ham I, I really thought we could have still could have thrown it away at 2-0 but at 3-0 it was game over and what a goal what a goal to uh, to finish it off perhaps that will come up Paul's going to do top 10 West Ham goals of the Premier League era soon um, I'm pretty sure that will be in there um, shame he never sort of stayed and fulfilled that talent, really, Ravel Morrison. But what a goal that was! We won the game three 0 Oh, how good is it to come out of White Hart Lane with a three 0 victory? You know, a lot of their fans left early, um, so there weren't that many around at the end. But yes, coming out of there and then going back, sort of a couple of months later, and doing them again in the League Cup. But the main reason I wanted to bring it, and the one that comes in at number two, is that absolutely fantastic three 0 victory, where everything just went right for us in the second half. What a day out for the fans. I will remember it forever because it was just absolutely fantastic and, and will forever go down as, a, as a, just a brilliant away day. But I've gone on a bit actually, so let's move on to number one. And we are going back to um, Old Trafford. And we're going back to the FA Cup. It's the fourth round. We draw, we draw against Man United. No one gives us a chance. Absolutely no chance of going to Old Trafford. And beating one of the best sides in the world, as they were at that moment. With one of the best strike forces in the world, York and Cole. With two of the best strikers coming off the bench and showing them in Solskjaer. And they had them all on the pitch towards the end. And we went up there and we beat them. And it was iconic. And it was amazing. And Paolo Di Canio slotted that ball home. You all know the guy I'm talking about. Absolutely brilliant. And for me, it's my greatest moment as a West Ham fan. In my lifetime, don't forget. Sure, people there in 1980 will say that that obviously tops this. But in my lifetime, that victory at Old Trafford, again, twins with a bit of sadness because we didn't go on and win the tournament, win the FA Cup, which we should have done. We should have beaten Tottenham at home and gone on and win it. We didn't. But still, this moment deserves to be in here and it deserves to be in at number one. A few things I remember from the game. We had Shaka Hislop in goal. It was, a, it, it was not fit. He shouldn't have been playing. 
I think in the build, people were saying about oh, Craig Forrest can't start because he's conceded something like twelve goals in three games um, at Old Trafford and against Man United, so he can't start. So Shaka his lot basically played on one leg and kept a clean sheet. Amazingly, we had Hanu uh, Hanu Tinian. Remember him? He played in the back three. Um, I think it was his debut, and he made the most amazing goal line clearance. Uh, I think it was in the first half. Just had no right to make the clearance, and he did. And he played fantastically in the back three. The three in the midfield, three central midfielders, Carrick, Lampard, Cole. How good it is to have in this iconic game to have three players that came through your youth system. Obviously, there's other players on the picture, but up front, the main man, my hero, the man who I can say is my favourite ever West Ham player, Paulo Di Canio, just a legend. Forgetting the off-field troubles that he has uh, now with, with his religious views and what have you, um, Di Canio, as a footballer, was a magician. And every time he got the ball, something was going to happen. Just in, in, in a way that until I'd seen Payet last season, I hadn't seen at West Ham United. And this game kind of epitomises his entire West Ham career. In that he, everyone was saying, oh, Di Canio's not going to play. It's a way, it's a Sunday. He's not going to be interested. Boy, he was interested. And he ran onto that ball. Lovely little ball through. He ran on and he slots it under. Bartes, you all know the one I'm talking about. The hangers up in the air. It still gets sang about now. And we win the game 1-0. I don't even remember when that goal went in. Obviously, Bartes, he stood there, his hand in the air. Just t it, do you remember that programme uh, about 20 years ago where the kid had the special watch that could stop time? It's probably a more recent one now. It was like that. For about three seconds, just everything went silent. Nothing happened. And then everyone was sort of looking around and we looked at the linesman and lo and behold, there was no flag. And then in three seconds and then BAM! Absolute madness because we realised we was about 15 minutes away from winning at Old Trafford. And yeah, there was a bit of an onslaught. And yeah, his love, I think, that didn't make that many change, uh, saves. They had their four strikers on the pitch and we managed to hold on. And we won at Old Trafford. We won at Old Trafford in the FA Cup. And we'd beaten, frankly, what was at that point the best side in world football. And we did it in style. And we went there and we won again. Why didn't we go on and win it? Why can't I be sitting here saying that we went on and won the FA Cup this year? It frustrates me so much. But for the reasons that I've outlined, that is my top five. That is my number one moment, the happiest and proudest moment of my West Ham life. Being able to go back into school because I was a child at that point still and say to all them people, them fake Man United fans, we went to Old Trafford and we won. And for once, we're on top of the world and you can't say anything about it. And they couldn't. They were silent and it was fantastic. And we'd won at Old Trafford and it was great. Went on beat Sunderland in the next round. And then, of course, that terrible match against Tottenham at home where we ended up losing. But let's not dwell on that. Let's dwell on the fact that that was just such a great day winning at Old Trafford. And we did it. And Paolo Di Canio, that goal, thank you, sir, because that goal will forever be etched in my memory as my greatest West Ham moment. And I really do thank you for that. My only hope is that in, in the next, in my generation, in my lifetime, I'm hoping I've still got a while left on this earth is that I can edit this video and put in at number one, shove that to number two, and at number one that we've just won the FA Cup, because that is my dream. But until then, uh, this has been my top five West Ham moments, um, where I've been proudest and happiest and overjoyed. And I think, you know what? I think I might finally unwrap this DVD, uh, give it a watch, because it's still in its, its wrapper. Um, I think I might unwrap it now, give it a watch, and, uh, and recap all the, that great day uh, at Tottenham. And maybe have a look online for that fantastic day at Old Trafford. But until then, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this. And let me know in the comments below if, if any of these sort of ring true with you. Um, and don't forget, only talk about your generation like I've done here. I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to go. I'm going to say thank you for watching. Uh, give it a like, please. Please, please. Um, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.